I'm George Morlos from eCommerce Brokers, and in this video, we're going to explain what earnout financing is for online acquisitions. I'm George Morlos from eCommerce Brokers, and we've helped people build, buy, and sell online businesses now for over a decade. We've helped buyers and sellers sell and buy millions of dollars worth of online businesses. In this video, we're going to go into the complexities and the details of what earnout financing is and how you, as a buyer or seller, can use it to get a deal across the line. Let's get into it. So what is an earnout? An earnout is an agreement between buyer and seller by which a portion or all of the purchase price is paid out contingent upon the meeting of revenue or profit targets that are determined during negotiation. Earnout financing is becoming more and more popular as a way to mitigate risk for buyers and for a way to get a deal across the line for sellers. It is a well-liked option for buyers as it allows the purchaser to control the risk within the deal. As you can imagine, it isn't the first preference of sellers. Sellers usually like to go with seller financing, which is a loan from the seller to the buyer that needs to be paid regardless of the performance of the business. Now we've also made a video about seller financing, so go and take a look at that or subscribe to see videos like that. So what does an earnout deal look like? Generally speaking, the structure of earnout deals is usually around 50 upfront and 50 earned out. That is the rough estimate for deals ranging from 100 grand all the way up to $10 million. Now, the term, the frequency of repayments, the exact net profit and revenue uh, targets, of course, are contingent upon the specific business and are up for negotiation, but are usually based on the previous performance of the business. For example, a recent deal that we did for a buyer is we negotiated that they would pay 45% upfront in cash and then the remaining 55% over four years. They would make the repayments to the seller in quarterly installments as long as no profit, but revenue targets were met. Now, the revenue target, let's call it $50,000 a month. That would be the average that the business did previously under the seller. Now, if it reached that target, they would get their standard payment. That would just about estimate out to, if it was all consistent, would estimate out to the full value of the business that was agreed upon at the completion date and listing. If the business performs better, more than 50K, let's say it achieved $70,000 and the $70,000 benchmark target was uh, the zone in which a seller would receive a bonus payment. In the same, by the same token, if the revenue was less than the 50K mark, maybe it was, uh, if, if under 40K, the repayment would be less. So for that quarter, the repayment would be less because the business uh, did lower numbers. For buyers, it's great because if the business is not doing great or if a recession comes or if a pandemic comes and the business tanks, well, they don't need to make most or all of those repayments, judging by how they negotiated the structure of the deal. As you can imagine, in some cases, uh, the sellers do really well from this. They get all of their repayments and this is how it usually happens, generally speaking mainly because it takes a lot of vetting of buyer and seller. And when you vet someone that well, you get a pretty good understanding of what they will and won't do with the business post acquisition. What you'll find in most cases is that the average repayment is made. And maybe one repayment might be a little bit lower or a little bit higher because quarters, you know, sales go up and down in businesses. With businesses where they're about to see a decent amount of growth, maybe that the business has a lot of potential. If the seller is saying this business has a lot of potential, it's going to do really well, a buyer can say, well, if it has so much potential, you think it's going to do so well, how about we do an earnout where you're incentivized to use an earnout method so you get not just your, let's call it standard 50K revenue benchmark and your standard payment. The business, since it has so much potential, can achieve its 70K mark and a bonus on top of that. So as a buyer, you can use how the seller presents their business and the potential and the opportunities for growth as a mechanism to negotiate an earnout. The big question is, why would you use an earnout as opposed to sell financing? Well, if the business is a bit younger, let's say under a year and a half old or even a year old, that means it's a bit riskier. So the future of the business is less certain. That's a great way and point to, to negotiate over with a seller to get an earnout. By the same token, if it is a very stable business and it's growing and it's you know, let's say the top 10% of businesses out there in terms of quality, it's very unlikely you will be able to negotiate an earner. The preference will be towards seller financing or even completely cash up front. What are the types of earnout deals? Well, there's three types. Pure earnout, 
hybrid earnout, and contingent earnout. A pure earnout is where the entirety of the business is paid through an earnout. So if it's a million dollar business, $1 million will be paid out of the earnout structure. So you, the seller won't get anything up front, and over the period of time, let's call it five years, the seller will be paid out uh, by the buyer in its installments, let's call it quarterly or yearly installments. In a hybrid earnout, it will be like the deal I mentioned before, probably about 50% up front or you know, 30 to 70% up front, and the remaining amount will be paid over the earnout period in its installments. A contingent earnout is a bit more specific. Now it could be 100% uh, earnout, it could be 50% earnout, it could be any percentage, but it's more contingent upon some specifics. For example, let's say you're buying an online business and they said we just signed a deal with a huge retail outlet. It's going to, our product's going to be in 500 stores across the country, so there's a lot of potential. The earner can be contingent on that deal signing and actually starting. Of course, deals can fall apart within businesses. So these are what we call contingent earnouts. So what are some of the advantages of earnout financing? Well, number one is the alignment of interest from the buyer and the seller. Like I said, if the seller sees a lot of potential in the business, they can see that upside with an earner. And of course, on the buy side, they can align their, and mitigate risk with the seller so that it's a deal that they can do realistically with their investors instead of paying a full deal upfront. It's less realistic to get a deal like that done. The first benefit of an earnout structure is the alignment of interest. Both buyer and seller incentivize for the business to do really well over the uh, period of earnout. They're both incentivized to grow and to see that the profits and revenues go up. This means that no one leaves the deal feeling like they got cheated because they're both working on the exit and the earnout period. The second benefit, of course, is flexibility. On the buy side, of course, it gives you the flexibility to, of course, get more for your money and mitigate risk. On the sell side, it gives you the flexibility to sell your business when you normally might not have been able to do that. In a seller financing or full cash up front deal, you might not have been able to sell your business in the specific climate or the buying season that you're in. Whereas earnout might give you that opportunity and give you that flexibility to exit with a good upfront portion and also the return you get over the earnout period. The first disadvantage to an earnout deal is that it's a bit more complex than a normal deal, of course. There's a lot more negotiation, a lot more maths and paperwork you need to do, forecasting and financial modeling you need to do to see what the business could do and what the fair price and repayment period and repayment amount is. So there's a lot more work that goes into this, not to mention the legal agreement that you need to put together. As you can imagine, number two is lengthy negotiations. Negotiations for earnouts and the specific amounts and specific periods that needs to be paid back in can be very lengthy, can take weeks to even months. In conclusion, earnout financing is a powerful tool for buyers to use to get more bang for their buck when acquiring businesses and to mitigate risk. If you are looking to get an earnout deal or sell a financing deal even, or just to get some help on the buy side, we have a service just for you. It's called Elite Acquirers, where we help people source, negotiate, and close online business acquisitions. So if you're looking for a service like that, there'll be a link in the description. It's called Elite Acquirers, and you can get in touch with us and we can see if we can help you out. Now, I wanna know what do you think of earnout financing? Is it something you would use? Is it something you have used? Do you prefer seller financing? What are your thoughts? Let me know.